something to tell you, VooTubers. I've got something I want to discuss with my VooTubers. What Voo me on the VooTube through the VooTube lens or whatever it is. I want to talk to you about comedy VooTube. Yes, I bloody well do. Because I get myself on it and I try to be funny. I know, I know, I know most of you are going to blimmin... Well, you're going to be so shocked you're probably going to have to sit down in your VooTubers. But I try and get on here and I try and amuse people by being stupid and looking stupid and acting stupid. And telling a few jokes or giving a sort of quizzical slant on this mad world that we're all at present inhabiting. On this globe, what is going round and round in the universe or whatever it is, whatever it does. I don't even know what it does. But anyway, where am I? Follow the thought. So I get on here and I try to make people laugh. That's what I do. And I do get comments sometimes. A few weeks ago, I got some comments off, uh, well, a very nice lady. That I won't tell you her name. It's actually engraved in my brain, but I won't say her name. And she said to me, Boo Two Fooers, that uh, she thinks that I am trying to be Frankie Howard. And then when she wasn't done with that, she said that I was trying to be like Mrs. Brown for Mrs. Brown's Boys. Now, I can absolutely assure you that um, I ain't trans and I am definitely born of a female gender and are still a female gender and have had children. So I'm obviously definitely a, a not a man, I'm definitely a woman. And I'm not trying to be anybody because both those characters were actually men playing at being women. So not to be deterred after I pointed this very politely out to this woman, she then decided that, um, well, in the point of, uh, well, just in the hope of free speech and support of all sorts of free expression in the arts and just in everyday life, she then said that she thought I should ditch my turban, which isn't a turban, it's a scarf actually, uh, I should ditch the turban, ditch the pinny, and I shouldn't actually, she wasn't just happy at that, what I dress and what I wear, no, no, no. She then wanted to tell me that uh, she doesn't like me standing, she wants me to sit down, and she wants me to sit down and face the camera, and uh, once she's got over all of that, she then wanted me to talk to you and her, about Meghan and Harry and nothing else. So, yeah, it was quite a difficult conversation, Voo Two Voos, to be quite honest, because I thought this was actually indicative of a quite preposterous sort of that we shouldn't really see amongst our age group. Because our age group, and I know the logarithms of the people that watch me, the majority of you were, well, you ain't never seen 50 again, are you? A lot of you. Uh, and me as well. Um, oh, I do get some younger viewers and I love them too but the majority of the people that watch me are of a more wiser sort of headed uh, experienced sort of older people that remember days of when you could laugh and have a joke and, and well it was a free land it was a free world you could have a joke and uh, it's sort of lost and I do expect to get that from the sort of Generation Z or what I think they're called Gen Z or the Millennial Whippersnappers, you know. You expect that off them, but you don't really expect it off older people, do you? And at the end of the day, if people don't want to watch me, all you have to do is click off. You don't actually have to come onto my channel just to dislike everything because you're discombobulated because you don't like my turban or you don't like my pinny or you don't like the fact you think I'm a man pretending to be a woman or a woman pretending to be a man, or whatever's going on in your crazy head, or you don't like me standing up, you want me sitting down, you don't want me looking over there, you want me looking at you, sitting down, wearing the clothes you want me to wear, saying the words you want me to say. I mean, I think you're on the wrong channel, love, to be quite fair. Uh, the idea is that comedy is actually an art form, and I learnt this very, very long time ago when I was a, a, a wee young girl, and uh, I'd like to take you back, actually, to the 70s and that, and Laurel and Hardy. I mean, I can remember during the lockdown, and, uh, well, what's that? Well, no, lockdown is a sort of 20 cent, 21st century thing, isn't it, really? But uh, in the 70s, we had blackouts, which is the same as lockdown, really, isn't it? I can assure you it bloody was boo too, boo. It was, was bleeding, freezing cold. Your mum had no bleeding, nothing to cook on. There was no, we had no central heating in them days, and the coalmen were always on strike, just when the electric people went on strike, and everybody else went on strike, the big men, and everybody all went on strike. And you were just locked down in your house. And in this, the sort of small amount of time that sometimes they did put the telly on, and in them days it was mainly black and white telly, they put black 
black and white telly on and you get 20 minutes of absolute heaven when they'd show you an old um, Laurel and Hardy. And that's where my love of, co of comedy actually started with Laurel and Hardy. And even though I've seen all of them, well, dozens of times throughout the decades, I can still watch them, which they're all on YouTube for two viewers. I can still watch them and laugh. They're still bloody hilarious. And that's the idea of comedy, I think. It's timeless. It doesn't really have a... Uh, it's a, a genre and an art form that is timeless. And then the other day I see that Ricky Gervais, the God that is Ricky Gervais. Yeah, he's come under fire at the moment because he told a joke. And I'll be honest, I've actually looked at the joke. And to my mind, it was fantastic in its cadence, in its structure, in, in, in just in its delivery, its timing. It was pure Ricky Gervais. It was pure British humour at its best. And to be fair, he was picking on, he was poking fun at trans activists. To be honest, that's about the only thing you could do with trans activists. Because they're usually white, straight, middle class people that never met anybody trans or even vaguely different from the people they see in Hampstead. You know? And they get themselves all hot and bothered about on other people's behalfs that, if you ask the other people, really don't want them getting hot and bothered. So he was telling a joke, and it was a fantastic joke, but... In my day, that same joke, with the same framework, the same structure, the same cadence, could have been told about an Irishman, or your mother-in-law, or in my day it was always an English, an Irish, and a Scottishman, and things like that. But you can't tell those sort of jokes anymore. I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous, the fuss that people make about jokes. And that's why I get up here, because I hope when my day's done, and it's time for me to go up, to God, because I ain't going down there for two viewers, I can assure you of that. I know that I've done my little bit to keep, well, to help keep this art form alive because it is going through two viewers. It is going, it's going when people can't see the joke and can't see the parody. If any of you think I walk around like this normally, I dress up like this to give everybody a good laugh. Uh, you know, that is the idea of comedy, is to make people laugh. So, to my dear commentator, Helen, from a few, weir year, uh, few weeks back, up yours, love. I'll do what I want on my channel. Bye.